Minister, and I too want to acknowledge really the extraordinary work of the prison service in protecting everybody, particularly from the more virulent strains of COVID or the more dangerous strains of COVID-19 at an early stage. Um, clearly, Omicron got us all in, in one way or another, but uh, they really did exceptional work in a, in a very enclosed environment. Um, I just want to, to question, though, the remaining sort of COVID restrictions uh, insofar as they're there. I, I understand that family visits have started again recently, and that's that's very positive and to be welcomed. Um, is there full at this stage access now for legal representatives as well for consultations? We've lost all our feet. Continue, I think, anyway. Um, is it just an ongoing question, or, or if if the minister could, you know, come back to me just just on that point? Um, Deputy Patrick and I co-chair um, the Iraqis Penal Reform group or, and uh, it's, it's a question that, that's, that's, that's coming up uh, but the family visits is so important and, um, but, but uh, if you could clarify the position on legal visits as well and I wonder if the Minister could discuss the timing of the completion of Limerick please um, so just in relation to the visits and also the legal representation, um, what's happening in most instances is a hybrid return or a hybrid model where obviously there's still um, availability for those to, to speak to or to, to engage with their legal representatives or indeed their family members um, via video link or via Zoom. Um, but there has been the returning of family visits, um, not to full capacity in every prison because as people may be aware there are still outbreaks happening within our prison and it's important that we're able to manage those and that the prison service um, are able to manage those but the intention is obviously to get back to full capacity um, as soon as possible acknowledging that for some um, the use of a hybrid type model or video links um, is equally as um, it, it, it's satisfactory for them also. I think that feeds into um, the work of Angarda Siakana, but also the court, court service working with the prison service around the modernisation programme, um, where it's not necessarily always the case that a prisoner needs to travel, be it to a court, be it to a guard station, um, to, to carry out uh, the, the, the judicial process. Um, uh, and so I think we need to, to take some of the positive elements of um, the changes that have happened uh, and apply them. And of course, that's beneficial not just for the prisoners, but I think uh, it's beneficial in terms of resources, funding, timing, uh, and managing a more effective system between the courts, the Gardaí, and the prison service. Family, of course, is extremely important that people are allowed to visit. Um, so that's why, that's whenever possible, that has been resumed. Um, but having to take on board the fact that there are still outbreaks happening. Sure, and that's under understandable. The family visits are so important for obvious reasons, but so too are taking of, of legal instructions. So, I mean, it's understandable the broader modernisation programme, that, you know, that's not necessary to attend every court uh, appearance, particularly perhaps on the criminal side, but on the family side, there are many prisoners who's, who have our family cases in the district court in Dolphin House, childcare proceedings, for example, and for whom it could be very important to, to be sure to be there to, or, to articulate their case as well. Uh, and I, I'd ask that, that, you know, that the department could follow up and ensure that that, that, is, that that is being resumed as quickly as possible, but particularly the, take, you know, the taking and giving of, giving of legal instructions in those cases, as much as criminal justice cases, you know that that can't be replicated over Zoom in perpetuity. Uh, in the same way, you can't take advice or give instructions in the same way. So, uh, the family visits are obviously the priority. But I would urge that, um, where possible, that can be resumed as, as quickly as possible. In terms of Limerick, um, despite COVID-19, um, there's been significant progress made. Um, the estimated completion is actually Q2 of this year. Um, right. So uh, we expect to open the accommodation, I suppose, later on in the year, so hopefully by Q4 in 2022, um, which for, for the many reasons that I just outlined will obviously be very welcome and very positive. That'll be a really big um, bonus for, for the prison structure generally, and it's, it's a great achievement after after this time. You know, it's, uh, it's, it's been a long time coming, and it's a great achievement to have it completed. It is, and I think a number of times I've been here, questions have related to slapping out and obviously a process and procedure that we want to eliminate completely, so this will play a huge role in that. Well, I think the Iraq, this um, uh, penal reform group will look forward to visiting the, the new prison as much as uh, we've written to the Director General, um, myself and Deputy Batchik, to ensure that the, the committee can visit the prisons. I'm sure there'll be no difficulty from the department or the minister's perspective in, in enabling that as soon as may be once COVID allows. Thank you very much.